with Orange Moon Art Studio. I'm the lead artist and director. And I wanted to kind of walk you guys through a little bit of my setup. Um, I hear a lot of questions on Facebook and different things about um, what kind of easel to get, what kind of airbrushes to get, what kind of paint to use. There's lots of options. I just want to show the ones that I typically use. I'm going to start with my easel setup. So I use pegboard for an easel. I've got this set up. It's four foot by eight foot. And uh, I use pegboard so I can put these pegs in it and hold all different kinds of things up here because as an airbrush artist, you never really know what you're going to paint next. So for example, today we're going to be painting a uh, hood liner out of a Camaro for a show car. And I have uh, the peg set up. Uh, you see these two pegs holding this piece up and then this piece is independent but it goes in there so I have two other pegs to hold that up in, in the place that it goes. I drew a chalk line around it while it was still on the hood so I knew exactly where it sits in here. Uh, the pegboard, um, the secondary reason that I use the pegboard, not just so I can place anything anywhere, is also I have an exhaust fan system built in the back of it that sucks all the overspray through the holes and out the back of the, the studio. So you don't have extra overspray floating around your, your area and getting on everything else. Just really is a nice feature to be able to take the overspray away, especially if you're using uh, paints that have a lot of solvent. It just takes the solvent right out of the room. So I have in my setup when I'm painting, I typically use an iPad for my um, reference pictures. I used to just tape them up there on paper, which works fine, but it makes it easier since I go through so many of them just to keep them on the iPad. The uh, uh, paints, or actually let's go with the airbrushes that I use. Today I'm using, uh, I use Badger airbrushes, but today I've got four different ones set up up here because I want to show you that any four of them or any configuration of airbrushes can do the project that you're looking for. Um, you just have to really evaluate what you're doing and what kind of volume of paint you need. So today I'm using all four of these are double action uh, siphon feed. Siphon feed means it uses the air pressure to suck the paint out of the bottles and I'm using these because I'm going through so much volume of paint on something like this. So we do murals and all those bigger projects and it would just take forever if we had a cup fed which is called a uh, gravity feed so you're not using the air pressure to suck the paint down, you're using gravity. So you can actually work at a lower pressure and actually sometimes you get finer lines with those depending on the material you're spraying. The suction feeds, I can go from bottle to bottle to bottle and just with a little blowout, clean out the, because uh, there's like a paint mixture that can happen in here. So if you're switching from blue to yellow, you can get green for a moment. So I just have a, another bottle filled up with water. In this case, I'm using water-based paints. Um, this is the Vega 2000 Badger airbrush. Most of the products I have here are Badger. This is a Badger paint film as well. I'm using Imagineer Universal paint film for this project. Very durable material. That's why I really like to use it because we're doing murals in schools. Uh, kids can be a little destructive, some of you know, and uh, this paint really holds up to them. Plus we add a clear coat on top of it and that really uh, adds to the longevity of the artwork that we put in schools. So the Vega 2000, I'm also using a Rage. Uh, Rage has another feature that is kind of neat, especially for the beginner or model painters or things like that. The Rage has a set screw on the back that determines how far you pull back. So as a double action airbrush, you push down, you get your air, you pull back, you get your paint. With the set screw, you can determine how far you pull back. So you can have a set amount of paint coming out at all times. So this is good for models and things like that too. So you're not blasting too much paint on an area. The uh, other two brushes I have up here. Now this one's my personal favorite, the Omni 3000. I use it a lot. I've got the, uh, I've got the back off of it because when sometimes when you get a paint chunk in there or something, you can just go to the side and pull the back, which pulls the needle further out of the hole than the trigger will allow. And this allows you to blast those paint chunks right out of the airbrush. Uh, that's very, very handy. All of them can do that. You just take the back off of them to do that. Uh, this one also has um, 
a really exposed needle. So you can get up here and really just pick the paint right off that needle because when you're spraying with um, water-based paints or any paint, uh, the air pressure tends to dry the material on the needle, which you lose your fine line. So this one just makes it easy to pick the tip of it real quick. And then the other brush I have up here is the Badger 155 Anthem. It's another classic old, old, old and goldy brush thing. It's like a tank. You just keep on using it. So it's another really good airbrush. So I've kind of gone over my setup here for you. And one more thing I want to show you is over here to the side, I usually just keep a blast board that I check my airbrushes before I get onto my project. When I draw these out, I draw them with chalk. Uh, on fabric, I typically draw chalk because as my airbrush comes across, the air pressure blows the chalk away and then you don't have pencil lines or anything like that in there. So I'm going to go through and use white to build up all my highlights on this. And I'm going to keep the black as much as I can of the material to show through for the shadow areas. Then after I paint my black, or after I paint my white, I'm going to come through and do my shadowing with the black. Uh, most of my colors, my blues, my browns, my reds, all of those are transparent. So I'm going to actually create my depth with black and white and then spray my color over them so that you get deeper colors. So instead of having red with black on top, It'll be black with red on top, which will tone the red. So you'll have a deep red into a bright red. So that's just a method I've learned to really make the artwork intensify a little bit. Okay, so I sprayed the white and uh, used the black of the, the hood liner to show through. So I just basically brought my highlights up on top of the black. Now it's real fuzzy from the overspray of airbrushing and I wanna start cleaning it up, making it sharper and intensifying the shadows. And uh, I found making it look real, you intensify the shadows and you brighten the highlights. That gives a lot of depth. So what I'm going to do now, I've cut a few shields. And these are so I can get in here and uh, spray these little pieces, little corners darker. And I have little feather cutouts. So when they go on there, I can actually start creating my little breaks in the feathers. So I made these custom for this project. Just cut them out of cardboard. And uh, I like to use an X-Acto knife, not scissors, because it tends to bend the paper a little bit. The X-Acto knife gives you a clean cut. Okay, so the black and the white is sprayed. And uh, I went ahead and took this piece off. So in case this moves around a little bit and there's a little edge, I wanted to touch that edge up around there before I put this piece back on. I'll probably have to take it off and do a little more touch-up later on. But... Uh, I'll go ahead and set that piece back on there for now. Since these colors are transparent, you can already see I started spraying brown over some of it. Uh, most of the work is done at this point. Um, all the detail work and the grunt work takes place in the black and the white. So the project's finished, as far as I'm going to take it. If you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to leave them. And another thing to remember when you're painting with an airbrush is be patient. Because the airbrushes screw up, you've got to work on them, you might get a paint clog, you might have a, a bottle get the little hole on top uh, dried over and then you have a paint problem. Just be patient and keep painting. And if you start getting frustrated, walk away. If you notice, I had a few different shirts on because I could only work on it 30 minutes or an hour at a time. I probably have about three hours in this now. So uh, you guys enjoy painting and uh, see you next time. If you'd like to see more artwork, please visit our website, orangemoonartstudio.com. And as always, remember to like and subscribe for more videos.